Alright guys, the Sir clip showed up in the mail here. I guess that means it's time to start reassembling. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay out all the parts and uh, just kind of start practice fitting, making sure I've got everything in the right place. Alright, so I got everything laid out here. I got it all set up and ready to go for reassembly. Um, you may remember I was talking about the ball bearings to go in here. Now, normally what I would do to keep ball bearings in place of something like this, because it's pretty obvious, as you can see, they're going to fall right back out. Normally what I would do is use gear grease, or some sort of heavy lithium grease, and just pack them in. And that way they lubricate as well, holds them in place. But in this case, the book says specifically not to do that for any of the gear, for any of the gear um, bearings within this transmission. So, it does, however, say to use gear oil, but... Uh, this stuff right here will not hold any of those bearings in place. It's no saving grace. They're just telling you to do that for uh, you know, for the initial startup of the engine first time. Make sure that everything has oil all the time on it. But uh, anyway, another thing the book says is that uh, you're supposed to assemble from this side down. So this side's supposed to go down and uh, this would face upward. Kind of like this in the picture here you see. Bigger halves on the bottom. Um, I'm not going to do that, and the reason is that these are supposed to be removed for that to happen, and uh, I can't seem to get mine off. It may be because I need to pull this sir clip, I'm not sure, but uh, when I unscrewed this uh, bolt here and tried to pull these off, the most I could get it was about halfway down the shaft, and of course the ball bearings on this gear fell out, and I, it would not come the rest of the way. So. I ended up having to wrestle around with that to get the ball bearings back in. That was hell. I spent like 25 minutes dealing with that crisis and uh, found a good solution for it. Didn't It made it easy enough that it could be completed, but not really easy enough that, uh, that it's something I want to ever do again. <laughs> I've got these really, really strong magnets here. They're dangerously strong. They're in fact, so damn strong that they uh, chip each other apart when they stick together. And I just put a couple of those guys on the end of this shaft. And uh, so that's basically how I was able to keep the ball bearings in place just enough to get that gear back down on them. And I'll be doing that method here again. Uh, some of, something else to note, specifically for this Zundap anyway. Um, my Zundap had two shims right there in between these two gears. The rest of the gears had no shims. Now the book says that you know all the bikes are different so some bikes are gonna have shims in different gears. I mean there may be some that have one in between those two. There may be some that have the same amount of mine. There's no specific amount of shims. It just depends on how it went together for the factory. So uh, my recommendation to anybody out there watching this if they take apart a transmission just like this or you know this exact bike or whatever um, just make sure your gears stay in the order that they came off of the shifter shaft there because you know otherwise you're in a, for a world of trouble you'll have to get the special gauging tools and uh, you'll have to figure out where the shims belong and that's not something I really want to go through it's not something you will want to go through so it's best to just make sure that they stay in the order that they did when you pulled them off of the shaft. These have been like this since I took this apart. So, yeah, it's the best way to do it. So anyway, I guess I'll get started here. Alright guys, I apologize for the camera angle. And uh, we're going to have to assemble this on the floor. Because our garage is a total pigsty. And there's just no room to work in there, so I'm doing it on the floor here. And camera angle, of course you know, it's because I don't really have a tripod. I've got you guys sitting on the other case right now. So, anyway, got my gear oil ready to go here. And we're going to swab it into each and every one of these holes on the shaft as we go along. And that's about all it takes. Just a little bit. Okay, got my bearings on standby down here. And uh, what I'm going to do, like I was saying, 
First I'm going to get this gear, it's facing in the right direction. I'm going to set that on here, just for now. And I'm going to use my magnet here, I've got it in a napkin. And the reason I did that was because these things tend to chip a little bit when you stick them to stuff and they get their magnetic dust all over the place. And I just don't like the idea of magnetic dust circulating in my transmission. So I'm going to move this book here real quick. There we go. Alright, so that should provide enough magnetic force, hopefully, that I can stick these balls in their holes and they'll stay. Yep. This might still be kind of a pain, but we'll see how it goes here. Last one. And there we go. Not uh, not too complicated. I just gotta get this sucker to sit down nice. I don't know if one of the balls might have rolled back out. Well, I guess I gotta check and see. It's not wanting to move. Oh, they look okay. Come on. There we go. Can be a little bit stubborn, but uh, you just gotta mess with it just a little bit. And it'll go eventually. Guess you could also Put a little bit of gear grease right here if you want, or I mean gear oil. That kind of makes them slide down a little easier. Helps lubricate them up. Probably should have done that in the other one, but that's okay. We can just put a little bit here and a little bit there. Just let it cascade down in there a little. Once you start that engine up, oop, yeah, those things are strong. It's freaking magnets. Pulled it right out of my hand. We had a funny story about those. We found them in a trash can. There was like 30 of them. And didn't know what the hell they were at first. Picked them up. It looked like some sort of weird... Because it was, you know, most of them were stuck together. It looked like some sort of broken cane or something. And uh, started, you know, as soon as I picked it up, they kind of latched to each other. And I realized, oh my god, they're magnets. They're really, really good magnets. Magnets. I don't know why anybody would throw them away. So many uses. There we go, that was a lot easier. <sighs> Rinse and repeat. It's gonna be an interesting challenge figuring out what to do for the roller gear or roller bearings. I mean, it's the little rollers that sit in this area right here are gonna be kind of a pain. Probably have to do something with the magnets once again. Since that half of the case, the one that your camera here is sitting on, is the side that's supposed to be aiming down, it wouldn't normally be a problem because of that, but of course, you know, because we're doing it this way, we have to come up with something for that. It's going to be a little bit difficult. Make sure we got our shims, and we do. Yeah, this is far easier than what I had to go through to get the ball bearings on the back gear there. That was not simple. It should have been, but it wasn't. Okay, here we go. There's the gear stack with all the bearings in place. Looks good. So now I've got to come up with 
a way to do the rest of this. I'm going to put that back there. This is the counter set of gears here that would fit in place. I'm just going to kind of practice fit it to see that they're good. That looks really good to me. As you can see, the spacing looks just right. Nice and even at the top there. Okay. All right, so it looks like I figured out what we're going to do. We're just going to use a magnet again. I've got one on the back side there, and as you can see, I've got one roller sitting up high there. It's going to be kind of difficult to get them all to sit in place, and I know that some of them are going to, you know, stick to the magnet and go to the back side, so this is going to take a little bit of wrestling to get this in place, but uh, it should work. So, um, this bike's bearing system right here, they just use free-floating roll rollers, basically. And uh, they use one washer here. This washer has a special taper, you can see, on one side. That taper goes to a special taper on this side, on this shaft. Kind of helps keep it center, or keep it uh, from spinning too much. Um, there's supposed to be 19 rollers. And I have 18 in the bag here. And one over there. So, we've got all our bearings. I'm just going to kind of wrestle around with that a little bit. Uh, one other thing I'm going to do here um, is I'm going to put a little bit of two-stroke motor oil. Uh, this is injector oil, which uh, it should be okay to have a little bit of it. I'm going to put a little bit of that on the um, bearings of the crankshaft just so it has something to get started with so that when the engine's first being turned over they're not raw. Just a good practice in general to do. And uh, like I said, this little guy right here, this is starter spring, this is going to be the pain, the biggest pain of it all. Because as you see that, that tab right there fits onto those ears right there. And this tab right here goes into a hole right there. You see that hole? That's where it goes. That one right there. So, um... That's going to be really hard to get in place. Obviously, it would be easier if that half was on the bottom, but even, even if uh, I was doing it the way you're supposed to, it still would be pretty damn hard to find the spot right there where the spring is supposed to be. I don't remember if I said anything about it or not, um, but when I first took this bike apart, and I'll flash a clip of it, I could see that this was facing the wrong direction. I had taken the bike apart the way the book said to, and this, the two tabs that are on uh, this case right here, I could see that this was facing those tabs. So the people that took the bike apart before me, obviously it had been taken apart once before, they didn't get this in the right direction, which is exactly why it's so screwed up, which is why I had to buy this one right here, a new one, replacement. So anyway, I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit and uh, we'll see if we can get these two halves together. Also I've got the gaskets over here. I've got plenty of replacements for the future. Though I never really want to have to do this again, but uh, that's a full gasket kit right there. So this little guy right here just goes right on to there, and you can actually see, if you look closely, you can see the machine wear marks on it. See that little inner ring right there? That's your tall tale sign as to how exactly it went on. It went on facing that direction. You can see that there's a bigger ring right there, and if you line it up with that brass ring and bearing, I mean, in there, they line up perfectly. It's kind of cool how you can go back and look at uh, look at the old parts and you can basically line everything up just by uh, analyzing the wear on it or the machine marks. Oh, they're going to stay right there. Okay.
rolls nicely. I'll see how she's rolling when we get this whole thing together. Oh, look, this is a $400 engine stand now. <laughs> it's many uses beyond what it was supposed to be. I think, uh, yeah, that uh, actually holds it up nicely. All right, so here's where things started getting a little bit tricky. So because I was doing the case in the wrong direction, as I mentioned earlier, I had a little bit of trouble with the starter spring and the bearings. The bearings wouldn't stay in the race on the adjacent side that I'm, you know, fitting down on top of this uh, case on the bottom. They would not stay in their race too easily, even though I had a magnet on them. Typically what would happen was as it was coming down, they'd start sticking to the shaft or anything else that was becoming magnetized as the magnet grew nearer to the magnetic parts. And then the starter spring was a real problem. In every attempt I did, I couldn't tell if the starter spring was aligning with the tabs on this uh, top side case that I'm fitting down. It's not possible to see because it's basically a blind fit. Now, there was a way to, uh, to figure out if the starter spring was working, but I didn't realize I had to unscrew the cam, starter spring cam bolt to put a load on the spring at the time. So basically it was a blind fit and I had no way of knowing. What I ended up doing was I located the bearings to the shaft and put a magnet on the back side and this kept them exactly where they needed to be. This was a really good way to do it. And with the starter spring I basically ended up putting a magnet on the back side of the case I was fitting down so that the starter spring would stick to the case fitting down instead. And uh, this made it so that the tab that sticks outward instead of uh, you know side, side to side with the spring, the tab that sticks outward will actually fit into that guide hole. Because as you might remember, there's a taper to that hole. So this is exactly why the case is supposed to be assembled the direction that they recommend in the book. But thankfully I've got these really powerful magnets and they save the day once again. All right, this was definitely the better way to do it because now I can actually adjust the ring and watch the spring feed down onto it. See, I can move it back and forward. And uh, I can actually watch as I guide the spring into its hole there. So yeah, this was way easier, far better idea. Okay, so that went pretty easily. Um, I'm definitely sure that the starter spring is in the right place now. Rollers are turning nicely as well. So I was able to get them in there without any falling out. So the last step, or the last uh, thing to do in this step is just get these three bolts in their places. And if you watched me disassemble this bike, then you already know where these go. Um, or just go back to that video. This guy goes in here. I'll have to align the gasket, play with it over here and until it goes in nicely. And on the other side of the case, the magneto chamber, or generator chamber, or whatever you want to call it, is where these two guys go. And I'll flash a picture or a film scene of that when I get them in.